Today we will have uh, two chapters. The first chapter uh, is chapter 8, and chapter 8 related to relevant costs for decision making. Okay, and this chapter and the, the next chapter are very important chapters, and most of the time there, there are uh, some questions uh, related to those uh, chapters come in the final exam. Okay, in, the, uh, in this chapter, which is chap chapter 8, we will take the following, uh, the following items. The first one will define the distinct and uh, distinguish between relevant costs, uh, outla outlay costs, and opportunity costs. And next, we will identify and, and quantify the costs that are relevant to a particular decision. And next, we will see the relevant costs and we will use them to make some decisions, some financial decisions. And finally, we will set out, set out the relevant cost analysis in a logical form so that the conclusion may be communicated to managers. Okay, these are the uh, outlines of the, this chapter. Uh, what's the cost? The cost is the amount of resources, usually the financial resources, measured in monetary terms. And this amount of resources will be sacrificed to achieve particular object, objectives, okay? As an example here, if the company wants to buy new assets, uh, and they will reserve some money to buy this asset. This amount of money that will be reserved, we will call this amount of money, we will call it the cost of the asset, okay? So our objective is to buy an asset and the amount of money that we pay as a price for this asset is the cost of this asset. We have two types of costs. We have what we call the historical cost, okay? And this cost is the cost that we already pay, okay? We call it the historical cost. And the other type of cost is the opportunity cost. And most of the time, this is future cost, the cost that we will pay in the future. Why we call it opportunity cost? Because usually in the future we have different alternatives or different choices. And when we pay the cost for one of these choices, that means we will lose the other opportunity because that we call it opportunity cost. What is the meaning of relevant versus irrelevant cost? The relevant cost is the cost that we have to consider when we decide to make something in, in the business. Like for example, if we want to buy an asset, then the price of this asset is a relevant cost because based on the price of the asset, we, have, we, we can decide whether we buy this asset or we will not buy it. Okay, so that the, uh, the relevant cost is the cost that we, we, we need to consider. We need to put in consideration during the uh, decision-making process. How can we uh, uh, discover or how can we uh, uh, decide whether this cost is relevant, relevant or irrelevant based on this flowchart that we can, we have, we can see in the in the screen now. Yes, now relevant means related cost. Okay. So first of all, we, we we need to ask whether the cost related to objectives of the business or not. If it's related to an objective, then we go to the other question, which is related to the future. Whether the cost will be paid in the future or we already paid this cost. If we already paid the cost, then we can call this cost as a relevant cost because we already paid the cost. Otherwise, if the cost is in the future, we can say that this is relevant cost. 
Okay, the next level or the next question we can ask uh, does the cost vary with the decision? That means, does our decision uh, influence by this cost? For example, if we, found, if we found that the price of the asset is expensive, then we might stop from buying this asset. That means the decision making is influenced by the cost of the asset. In this time, we can say that this cost is relevant. Okay? If the answer for all of the three questions is yes, then we can say that this is relevant cost. Otherwise, we say that it's a relevant cost. Clear? Okay. Here we have a good example about the relevant cost. A garage means a workshop buys a lorry, a big car, with 10,000 pounds. And this lorry, or this car, or this truck, requires a new engine. And the cost of the engine is 2,500 pounds. And for repairing this engine, we need to spend 20 hours. That means the technician will spend 20 hours to fit or to fix the engine. The uh, hourly rate for this technician is 15 pounds per hour. Okay? Uh, the technicians are short of work. That means they don't have any other work to do. But the garage or the, the workshop need them. The, the, the garage owner or the workshop owner want to retain their services. If we did not repair the, 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 the truck, then we can sell the truck immediately with 9,000 pounds. Okay? So, if we fix the lorry or the truck, how much should we ask as a price for this truck? Okay, as you can see here, the opportunity cost of the truck or the lorry is 9,000. That means if we sold the lorry now without fixing the engine, we will have 9,000 pounds. Okay? And if we fix the engine, we will pay 2,500. Okay? That means here we have to ask the minimum amount the, the minimum price for the lorry we should ask is 11,500. Okay, so what about the 15 pounds here that we pay to the technicians and the 20 hours needed to fix the engine? Why we did not include it in the price here? What is the reason of that? What is the reason of that? The reason is that we want to retain the service of the technician. We want to keep him, okay? So we will pay to him whether he fix the lorry or he did not fix the lorry. And also, in the other hand, he does not have any other job or any other work that he will do instead of repairing this truck. That means this 15 pound is a relevant cost. Okay, is a relevant cost, and the relevant costs here are the uh, the cost of the lorry when we sell him directly, and the price of engine, and the price of the engine. Otherwise, all the other prices are irrelevant. Like for example, the uh, the price of the lorry here, and the hourly rate of the technician are in the irrelevant field. But what if we can see the other example here, the same example, but here we add this point. The technicians are busy and are charged out at 50 pounds per hour. That means if we let them fix the, the lorry, okay, we will uh, uh, theoretically pay 15 pounds per hour. Whereas if they walk outside, we will get 50 pounds per hour. So should we, uh, so uh, uh, so how, how much we will ask as a price for this loan? 
First of all, the, 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 first of all we need to uh, decide what are the relevant costs. The relevant costs are, the first one is the opportunity cost of learning, which is 9,000, and the opportunity cost of technician's time. Why 1,000? Because the relevant cost is the 50 per hour. Because, because the 50 pounds per hour here, we will lose this cost if we want to fix the load. That means this is relevant cost. We have to put it in mind. We have to consider this cost along with the 20 hours uh, that, that, that are needed to fix the load. When we multiply 50 by 20, it will give us 1,000. Another example, this company, JLTD, is bidding for a contract that will require 800 units of alpha. This is an equipment. Okay, we need 800 units from this equipment. Okay, and this material, the alpha equipment, is currently held at the information as follows. The historical cost, that means we already bought this code, this item, with 10 pounds per unit. Okay? If we, if we sell the unit without using the unit in the project or in the contract, we will sell it with 12 pounds. Okay? But if we sell it with 12 pounds, then we need to, if, if, if we need it again, then we need to buy another unit by 14 pounds. Okay, that means the, the, the price for this equipment increased from 10 to 14. Here we mean by resale value, resale value that means we, we will uh, sell it to the, to, the, to the project here. We will sell it to the project by 12 pounds. And we will sell it to the project, we will not use it again. You see here, alpha is no longer used by the business. That means where are the relevant costs? Here is the historical cost relevant? Of course, it's not relevant. Because, as we said before, that any cost that you already paid is a relevant cost. Then we need to check the other cost, which is those two costs, the resale value and the replacement cost, because those are a future cost. We, we, uh, here we will sell the alpha equipment with 12 pounds, and here if we want again to use it, we can again buy the alpha equipment with 14 pounds. So where are, uh, which, which, ones, which one of them, of the, the two costs are relevant here? Of course, this one, the 12 pound. Why? Because we will not use alpha, as it said here, no longer used by the business. So this one is irrelevant, and the relevant cost here is the 12 pound. Okay, so how much we will get by this contract? We will get 800 multiplied by 12, okay, is equal to 9,600. Okay, so here the relevant cost is the resale value or resale cost. What if the alpha equipment is in regular use? That means we will use alpha again. That means if we sell it to the product or to, to the contract, if we use it in this contract, again we will sell, uh, sorry, we will buy another alpha unit. That means we need, we need to put in mind or we need to consider the price, the new price of alpha, which is this one, right? Now, in this case, because alpha is a regular use, in this case, the relevant cost here is the replacement cost. And we need to count this contract using the replacement cost, which is 14 pounds. Okay, here, as you can see here, the minimum price for alpha for inclusion in the contract bit is 800 multiplied by 14 is equal to 11,200. Okay? Do, do you see how can, how can it be changed here? Because of this sentence. Okay? Because there is a certain condition that makes us change the decision from taking this post into the other post. Because here the alpha is no longer used and here we are using alpha regularly. That means we need to 
consider the price of replacing the alpha unit. Okay, so here are the different types of costs that are relevant and irrelevant. First, we will see the relevant costs. The relevant costs are the future costs that vary with the decision under consideration. That means each future cost might be relevant cost. So in the future cost, like for example the opportunity cost, and the opportunity cost is the cost of being deprived of next best option. That means we think of this cost as as if it's a chance for us whether to make a profit from this cost or we will not make any profit from this cost. This is the opportunity cost. As an example here, if you have two investments, okay, the first investment or the first, for example, you want to buy a house, for example, and you have two houses. One of the, one of the houses costs one million, okay, and it will be, uh, it will be rented by 100,000, and the other house costs 900,000 riyals, and it will be rented by 50,000. If you decide to buy the first one, then you need to think of the other one, whether it's an opportunity for you or it's not an opportunity. And the same thing happens when you decide to buy the second house. You must think of the first investment as opportunity or not an opportunity. That means if you have two choices or more than two choices, then we can consider the opportunity cost here. The second type of relevant cost, which is the future outlay cost, and this future outlay cost are those costs that you already commit. Okay, uh, sorry, those that vary with the decision. That means it will be changed with, with your decision. It, it, it will be influenced by your decision. Okay, so this is relevant cost. On the other hand, we have the irrelevant cost and. The irrelevant cost also have, has two types. The past cost, the cost that you already paid, and the future outlay cost, or the, 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 the cost that you already committed to pay in the future. You can see here, those costs that do not vary with your decision, that means you already committed to pay those costs. We can call them irrelevant costs. 